Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us tonight in our study. Um, guide us in the study of the Holy Spirit on the latter rain. Amen. 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 Okay. All righty, uh, people. We're going to go, we're going to start with the prophet Joel, mm -hmm. who speaks about the early, or another word for early rain is former rain, mm -hmm. which we uh, discussed somewhat in another lesson. And he also mentions the latter rain, which is uh, what we're going to focus on this evening. So Louise will read from Joel 2, verses 23, 27, and 29. Okay, go ahead. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit of upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will i pour out my spirit all right um we're going to use the bible commentary here to kind of uh, explain some of these verses we're going to go to verse 23, where it talks about be glad. Um, okay, be glad that he has given you the former rain moderately. Notice that it uses the word moderately. You know, moderate means, you know, a, a nice pouring, right? A good, a good enough pouring. And, uh, okay, so that's the former rain. And then the latter rain in the uh, will come. Let's see, it says here. Uh, this verse refers to the restoration of adequate rainfall. The former rain fell in the autumn and promoted germination. So after the farmers would plant their seeds, they would wait for the former rain, for the early rain to come, right? And uh, water the seeds. So they germinate. The latter rain fell in the spring and helped to bring the grain crops to maturity. So in their application to the Christian church, the rain, the rains represent the work of the Holy Spirit. So we see here the Holy Spirit is working uh, and causing the <laughs> early rain to come or the former rain, and the latter rain. Okay, um, any questions? Is that clear to everybody? Mm -hmm. that is That's very clear to me. So there, uh, so this, Jesus is using this, or Joel is using this comparison of, uh, you know, the rains for the farmers as to what's going to happen in the church. All right, um, Verse 27, uh, about you shall know, you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God. Uh, the second paragraph mentions that the first of the two outpourings of the Spirit would take place after the I am appeared in Israel. So it mentions here that I am again in the midst of Israel. Jesus stated he was the I am, right, of the Old Testament, God, when he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, uh, was I am. Okay, uh, in the Bible commentary, it says, The wondrous workings of God in the restoration of Israel would give evidence to those who had been tempted to believe that God had forsaken his people, that God was indeed working for their good. Even in the plague, God had overruled for the purposes of mercy to bring about a much needed repentance and reform. So we see how that's this being applied to the church today, right? Some had interpreted the successes of the enemy 
as evidence that the gods of the heathen were more powerful than Jehovah. With Israel's victorious over her foes, all would know that Jehovah was indeed God and none else. Okay, so um, that's what Joel is stating there. Uh, okay, in verse 28, it says, Afterward, and it shall come to pass afterward. The phrase here is indefinite as to time. It was God's plan to bestow upon the restored state of Israel the spiritual blessings here described. Because of the failure of the people and the consequent rejection of the Jewish nation, the promises were not fulfilled to little Israel. These promises were transferred to spiritual Israel, that is us today, right? Mm -hmm. Peter identified the events on the day of Pentecost as a partial fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. So instead of afterward, Peter used the phrase, in the last days. Okay, so uh, let's go back a bit here. Uh, when was the early rain? Okay, that was at Pentecost. Okay, so in the third um, paragraph, we see here that, uh, as predicted, the early rain or baptism of the Holy Spirit took place on the day of Pentecost, <clears throat> which was 10 days after Jesus returned to heaven. Okay, so we have gone over that before, so it's a little review here uh, about it would be poured out on all flesh. That is, all God's people could be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And that's what's been happening since the day of Pentecost. All who were present on the day of Pentecost were amazed, and they didn't understand what was happening. Okay, and of course, Peter mentions that. How long does the early rain last? According to the next uh, paragraph. If a person is fully repented of sins and committed to life and ser serving only Christ. Uh, did you read again. that? Huh? I didn't hear you. Say that again. At the first, at the first one, one, one must fully repent of their sins and commit their life and service and obey Christ. Okay. Uh, also on the first sentence of the first paragraph on uh, 85, the second column, how long does this early rain last? From the day of Pentecost onward, mm -hmm. every believer in Jesus Christ could be filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit. So all those who receive the Holy Spirit or are baptized with the Holy Spirit are receiving the early rain. Right, Pastor? Mm -hmm. That's what I understand. Is that what everybody understands? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, of course, we see, as it says here, that throughout the book of Acts, there's a record of individuals and groups of Christians being filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and we know what happened here in Acts with the early Christian church, how, how the gospel went forth uh, with great power throughout the known world then, right? Uh, okay. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay, um, now let's go into the latter rain. Okay, so before we do that, I forgot to mention here, Paul commanded every Christian to be filled Every day with the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5.18. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, the next question. What? That doesn't say anything about day. We've been drinking wine to excess every day. <laughs> well, 
So well, Peter, does it say? It doesn't say in Ephesians 5.18 that you should take, get the Holy Spirit every day. Be not drunk with wine wherein, wherein is excess. I just think he's referring to people who drink wine, drink it to excess. So we should be filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. I guess. Is that my understanding, Pastor? I disagree because we, we, should, we, we should always stay daily from the Christ. Yeah, we should even spirit. more so but, be. But, but, and at that time, he's talking about they drank wine early in the morning. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, okay. And of course, it's probably referring to the unfermented grape juice. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you, Leonard. That makes sense. Well, that, that's just one part of, if you read the whole clear down to uh, 21, so it's uh -huh. kind of, you know, I think he stopped just because of the Holy Spirit, but it also says speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving okay. thanks to all things to God. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So that was only part of a larger... Um, you feel the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Is there anything that says daily? No. No. Does anything say daily? No, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. No, it doesn't. Next question. But, you know, when it comes to what kind of wine it is, it is a real wine. It is alcoholic wine. Oh, really? uh, Yes. Do not get drunk with wine, it says. Okay? Oh, yes. That's so right. that's what I have here in your American. But well, we filled with the yeah. Holy Spirit, you see, because uh, what happened even in Ephesus, and that was a church of love, you need to know, but the, what happened with them, they lost that first love, love we right. read about that, right? Yeah. Why? Because they gave themselves under some practices uh, out of which was actually uh, drinking. Mm -hmm. They had issues, okay, with drinking. And uh, they drank because in that state, you know, when somebody's drunk, you can have dreams, Increasing. feel differently, oh, right, yeah. and whatnot, okay? So what they did, they pretty much uh, said, that, um, you know, don't get drunk, just don't, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So Paul ha has this, don't do this, but do that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that he is, you know, bringing together this, uh, these two aspects uh, of, uh, you know, what people might have thought are the same, but they are so different. And one is the real, really being filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah, the having some feelings and mm -hmm. whatnot on the other side by drinking. Okay. Yeah. So feeling good by being drunk. Yep. Or feeling good by having the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's, it's quite different. Strange combination. It's quite different. Yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. Paul is bringing this in because you know, for them, it wasn't normal. Okay, so you know, yeah. you, you you have a little bit of you know wine and. Mm -hmm. You feel good, and you know it's, it's the Holy Spirit now taking you over because you are. And many times, you know, they would go into even into trance, yeah, because of the influence of alcohol and uh -huh. whatnot, or at least they thought that. Yeah, and then and, they would say with the Holy Spirit. Yes, and Paul okay. says, "No, it's that's not. Fine. Don't, don't, okay. don't that even was, go there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's not it. That's okay, well, mixing the two. And, and when I said daily, it says in the Bible, mm -hmm. come to Him daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go uh, f further now and into the, what is the latter rain, mm -hmm. and when will it take place? So, Louise, read that paragraph, the third paragraph on the Saturn column of 85. Uh, let's see what the latter rain is, and when will it take place? The prophet Joel also predicted a second great outpouring of the Holy Spirit called the latter rain. In another sermon, Peter called the latter rain the times of refreshing, indicating when this outpouring of the Spirit would take place. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Acts 3, 19 and 20. Note the sequence of events Peter lists. 
First, one must fully repent of their sin, committing their life to serve and obey Christ. They would then be ready for the latter rain or times of refreshing, which takes place when the person's sins are being blotted out. The blotting out of sins refers to the end of the judgment, which takes place just prior to, to Christ's second coming. At that time, every case will be decided for or against God. John describes this time when he wrote, he is that he that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Peter confirmed this very same sequence when he urged the hearers of his sermon, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Hence the latter reign of the spirit takes place as the judgment ends just prior to sec Christ's second coming. We also know between the end of the judgment and Christ's return is the time of trouble. The latter rain will be necessary for God's people to be faithful to him throughout that difficult time. All right, that says quite a bit about the latter rain there. Don't we understand that? I, I never did understand about the blind out of your sins, and I didn't realize that that refers to the final judgment when our you know, we are either ready or not. Um, so what is the latter rain? <laughs> In a nutshell. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, if the uh, early rain... You have two devices on. Yeah, that's... I'm okay. going to have to turn one off, I guess. Just okay. have the other one on mute. Okay, okay. so what, what is the latter rain, you said? Uh, I lost my mic on the other one, so uh, okay. yeah, I turned that one off. I, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, the early church, uh, the early rain, as far as a global event, it died off at the end of the first century. Uh, but we also uh, understand that we have an individual early rain, uh, as you know, we're daily baptized by the Holy Spirit. But wouldn't it be different for the latter rain that it's only a, a end time global event and it's not an individual uh, experience before that, right? Well, that's a good point. You know, uh, agriculturally speaking, the early rain in the uh, area of Israel uh, they would expect it, it would come like a clockwork, you know, right after they would uh, have the seed in the ground and they would put the seed in the, in the, in the dry ground. Mm -hmm. And they would know, you know, in the coming days, uh, we will get the rain because if they did not, those, that, that seed, you know, that grain, what they put in the ground, whatever it was, it would die out, it yeah. would dry out, okay? Yeah. So yeah. they needed it. And uh, why? So that the uh, the, the seed would germinate, germinate, germinate start, growing. start growing. And there was enough rain for that. So it would come, obviously, and it would saturate the soil to the point that it would actually have enough moisture and nutrients and whatnot for, the, for that grain to grow to the point of having even the corn on the, on the end, okay? Mm -hmm. the, or the wheat. The wheat, right? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the latter rain came about six months later, and uh, or less. In autumn. But in, in fall, in autumn, right. Yeah. So, uh, and what was the purpose of that rain? The purpose of that rain was to fill the, the grain so, so that it, it is not dry, but it is filled, you know, it, it grows to the, the right size, okay? And, to, and to ripen it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was also necessary to come at the right time at the right time so that you know it happens if it's late it will it will not not fill up 
Okay, so it will be very dry, very, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like squished, whatever. Of course. So. Yes, but if, if it, they would get it right, you know, it would fill up and, uh, and then, you know, it would obviously multiply. Now, speaking in spiritual terms, uh, we can see, and it was said in the book of Acts, that actually the Pentecost was the early rain. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Yeah. So that, you know, the seed that Jesus Christ and the disciples have sown, yeah. that it can, it can germinate. Mm -hmm. And obviously it had enough juice in it, okay, that it lasted up until, it will last up until Jesus comes back or just before that time. Uh, mm -hmm. Because God will need to send another outpouring on his people that they can finish the work. In, order, in other words, that this um, grain, you know, that has to come to fruition, that has to fill in and so on, right. it can fill in. Now, how is God going to do that? Is it going to be individual, as, uh, uh, as Ken asks, right? I'm sure it will be, but it will be also corporate. Uh -huh. It will also be corporate. But it will be on those who are the remnant. Mm -hmm. right. Now, the remnant are not just Seventh-day Adventists. Please understand that. Yes. The remnant are those who will come out from the world yes. in the last days from other places. and form the remnant. So that's very important. And uh, how is God going to do that? It's up to be seen. But that is going to be also the work of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget that the remnant are going to agree completely on what the Bible says. In other words, mm -hmm. uh, they will become Adventists. or more. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Now, is it going to be a literal or? It's all over, right? People can name it. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Name of the group, not just a number. In Revelation. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to Connect. get together. Yeah. <clears throat> what was your question? <laughs> if it was 144,000 yeah. oh. that are going to stand for Christ and mm -hmm. no matter yeah. what, stand oh, for yeah. Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> it's but like that, he says, yeah. not just Seventh-day Adventists, they're going to be oh, followers yeah. of Christ. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> well, it's very clear revelation of those who have the testimony of Jesus. And, and, um, uh, yeah. Follow the commandments of God. They follow the commandments of God. Preachers to the world at that time. And have the testimony of Jesus. That's yeah. who are the remnant are. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, that's going to be a great event, isn't it? When the latter rain falls, and uh, uh, look forward to that. Uh, I was also going to kind of go back. Well, I said during the in Joel, it says about um, your sons and your daughters mm -hmm. shall prophesy, your old man shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in these days. And of course, we saw that in the early rain, right? Uh, but in the Bible commentary, I thought it was interesting. It says, this thought is further emphasized by the enumeration of the various age groups, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would share the spiritual blessing. Further by the fact that bond and free alike would yes. receive the spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. The context makes clear that more than the reception of the spirit, such as the company's conversion and works, transformation of life is, is here spoken of. Mm -hmm. This special pouring out of the spirit results in the display mm -hmm. of supernatural gifts, mm -hmm. such as prophesying. On the day of Pentecost, when the apostles were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, Peter asserted that this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the early church, the manifestation of the Spirit was given to every man to, to profit withal according to 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Mm -hmm. Various gifts were in evidence, such as the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. The events of Pentecost were but a partial fulfillment of Joel's prediction. The prophecy is to reach its full accomplishment 
in the manifestation of divine grace, which will attend the closing work of the gospel. I thought that was interesting. So uh, it's, it's just the early rain was a partial fulfillment of what Joel was speaking about. But mm -hmm. the closing days is going to be even more so, right? Mm -hmm. As I understand. And it also says in there, Satan thinks he's got gained all the power in the world. Yes. But uh -huh. with the Holy Spirit has more power than he does. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So there's something here that, that uh, <clears throat> is, this, is this writer trying to say that each person that comes to the Lord has three spirit experiences? Or are we saying that the latter rain is a separate Thing. Okay, well, experience? I was just gonna we were gonna just start that now. Yeah. Okay. Well let's okay. So Sandra has about a, a question about the three experiences that he explains here in the next uh paragraph. Uh and that was my next question. What are the three experiences? Okay, it says here that each level of Holy Spirit's power enables the Christian to grow closer to the Lord and gain greater victories over Satan. The first experience in the spirit is the new birth, uh, which initiates the Christian's walk with the Lord in the spirit. The second empowerment is the early reign or baptism of the Holy Spirit, through which Christ lives most fully in the believer, and through which they are further empowered to live the victorious Christian life and minister in the spirit. And the third empowerment of the spirit is the latter reign of the spirit. This final great empowerment of the spirit is especially needed just before Jesus returns. Saints' temptations will increase in strength. God counters this by endowing the Christian with even more of the Holy Spirit's power in the latter reign. So I guess you could say that in answer to your question, yeah, so it is part of the latter did reign. Did your mother have the, the latter reign before she died? And that's what I'm asking. This is this is making it sound like each person before they die is going to have the latter rain. That is not. I don't think so. Yeah, don't think so. No. no. If the latter rain is going to come at the end time and some of God's people rain. are put to rest before the latter mm -hmm. rain, they will not be part of the latter rain, right? I need to talk to this guy. <laughs> yeah, we were kind of. Uh, you know, some some things are. Um, a little confusing. Actually, here. yes, they are yeah. confusing yeah. because. I, I, you know, I, I read through uh, Ellen G. White regarding this and our commentaries and all of that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I never found this kind of explanation ever. So this is a little bit for me uncertain. Yeah. I think he's trying to just kind of summarize what the he Holy Spirit does for us. Go there like I did. No. Huh? I he didn't intend that to so. happen, but he's talking about the last last days. No. Yes. No, no, not exactly. The last day before his death. Before his death. Before his death. Or the last days. No, I think they're talking about the last days before days. Jesus comes back. Yeah, I don't think yeah, they're talking not about. When a person so dies, the, no. the, the latter rain, you know, as I said, you know, when I was speaking about the agricultural side of uh -huh. this, because you need to understand that before you go into uh, spiritualizing it. Uh, you know, it came, it came for the purpose of ripening, uh, filling up and ripening that, that uh, fruit, okay, that, yeah, yeah. so that's what it, it did, so it, it would make sense, you know, that the letter rain, uh, just as we read over there that uh, Paul is speaking about it as refreshing, is that right? Yes, it's refreshing. Yeah, it's rain. the refreshing rain, you know, before Jesus comes back before Jesus comes back last days, mm -hmm. not us as before we die, right. you know, yeah. uh, because for us, before we die, the most important thing is Christ's righteousness. Yes. And that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. But to finish his work, those who are going to take part in that, they will need an extra power, double outpouring of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. if I may say, in order to do that, because 
those days are going to be more than challenging. Yeah, to stay strong for Jesus through yes. everything they're going yes. through. Yeah. And they will need the power of the Holy Spirit for that. Right. But he says here in the first sentence of the last paragraph, he says the only Christians who will be ready to meet Jesus. Oh, Louise was supposed to read mm -hmm. that. Well, Read that, yeah. Louise. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Louise is going to read this. this uh, yeah, go ahead. The, only Christians, okay. who will the only Christians who will be ready to meet Jesus when he returns are those who have experienced the early rain baptism of the Spirit and the latter rain of the Spirit to the fullest. Okay, stop there. Yes. So see, he's saying that's that confusing. every Christian yes. will be will experience that early rain and latter rain. No, yeah, the only, only, Christian. No, only those that are alive when Christ is coming. Those, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we wait to meet Jesus when he comes. Oh, okay. okay. I'm not okay. I was, yeah, I know. I, I wondered about that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, oh good grief. Think, okay. Yeah, that's good. Oh, go yeah. ahead. You want me to finish? Well, yeah, just read the whole paragraph. Okay. As we saw in a previous day's devotional, this is why the foolish virgins were not ready for the bridegroom's return. Return while the wise virgins who had the extra oil of the spirit were ready. Victory under the power of the early rain baptism of the spirit is absolutely necessary in order to receive the latter rain. Ellen Wright confirmed this when she wrote, unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, we sh shall not recognize the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. It may be falling on on hearts all around us, but we shall not discern or receive it. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that last sentence is very powerful, I think. Yeah. I've heard that yeah. Well, that uh, it sounds like the sealing, that the latter rain prepares us to receive the seal of God, so that... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, Paul is saying that we will be sealed by... The, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be his work. Part of the latter rain. Uh, exactly. It's part of the latter rain. So, you know, it, it will be a very special manifestation of the Holy Spirit because it, it, you know, it will go beyond, it will go even with what Jesus said that we will do, or those who will have the Holy Spirit, okay, uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will do even greater works than he did. Yeah. The you manifestation, know, the manifestation will be is uh -huh. going to be absolutely greater, uh -huh. and it will not be coming out of us. It will, it will be coming out of the Holy Spirit through us. Yeah. So you know that is you know if you think about that, and the last days, you know you you can see how serious and how 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 solemn at yeah. the same time. You mm -hmm. know that time is going to be. Yeah, I mean like miracles. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. so what we never seen before yeah, or, or experienced or anything yeah. like that. When again, just like, you know, Peter and Paul did, you know, they would just put a piece of cloth, you know, from people, or so, from Peter on somebody, you know, and yeah. the person would, would, would heal, healed, you know. Yeah. So, you know, even more than that, you know, they would just say, just as Jesus said, stand up and walk. We don't have anything else to give you, but what we do, you know, in the name of Jesus, Jesus stand up and walk, okay? So all of these things, you know, will happen even more because uh, this is going to be the final uh, uh, conflict, you know, right. between good, good and evil, between Christ, the Holy Spirit, and Satan and his demons, and we're going to be right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And we'll need that, yeah, in order to get to the close, close of your yeah. But we're, we're expected to be holy as he is holy. Exactly. And only can we do that exactly. if we have this out for And there is one prayers. more thing, and it is before Jesus comes back. Yeah. The probation, you mentioned the probation, okay, yeah. is the time when uh when to the temple you know okay i don't want to go there right now because that might confuse some of you but we will have a time that will be uh, you know some are arguing it's not true and it is that we will be without the holy spirit oh. you know that will be the probation just before christ comes back and that those who will who had the holy spirit will stand just as jesus stood true to to his father we will stand true to the to Jesus and uh, and the Holy Spirit, even you know by ourselves, just as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. When the father turned around, the father turned from him. So he told him, Why have you forsaken me? Exactly. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if uh, if the uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit can be equated with not having a mediator, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, I'm wondering if a mediator. Oh. because I'm wondering because I'm thinking we still have the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking that that would would there be a need for us to go through. Christ's experience when uh, before we have a new body, we're going to still have a fallen nature, only it will have been a fully overcoming uh, nature. Um, so I, I, uh, I couldn't imagine being without the Holy Spirit during the time of trouble unless, uh, unless I'm not sealed. So if we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, wouldn't we still have the Holy Spirit? Right. Yep. So I'm just telling you what I what I was taught through the years, right? And um, and that was quite something, you know, because uh, standing alone, um, as Jesus did on the cross, mm -hmm. okay, before after the Father, you know, turned away from him, was uh, was actually a very special experience. Uh, are we going to go through that completely as Jesus did? I don't know. But uh, anyway, the time of trouble is going to be something very unique where we will need the power that is outside of us. Yeah. Well, as I understand it, when Jesus was on the cross and, and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That he was experiencing a second death. Afterwards. Something that no one who uh, is saved will experience. Not the second death. Well, even like the but, the early Christians that were persecuted, like they were burned or fed to the lions. I mean, they had a strength yes. that kept them there to exactly. be burned. Exactly. So that had to be the Holy Spirit that as well. Has to be because exactly. they were for God no matter what. Exactly. Came to them. Wow. Well, somebody was asking on the on Bible questions uh, last night. I was listening to Bible questions and the answers, and someone was asking, "How do we prepare for end time events?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Denzi was saying, while well, he was saying a lot of these things, but also he was saying, "Well, don't go build a bunker and stock your <laughs> bunker with all kinds of food because." You know, you don't know what's going to happen at the end of time where God will have you go. And you won't have to try to take anything. Right. This is where it's going to be complete trust in God. He tells huh? you. Just take, you know. Yeah. Right? We're going to be like you Elijah, you know, yeah. the ravens might feed us and he will send us manna. Yeah. And I think that will actually happen. He said your water and bread will be yeah. sure. Yeah, our water and bread will be sure. Yeah. So what I says that the angels will say, Go in and shut your door. Yes. And we'll take care of you. Uh huh. All right. Jesus, uh, when we'll he was on the cross. Hmm? Yes, when Albert. Jesus, when Jesus was on the cross, his and and he came down at the resurrection. Uh, his struggle was uh, was it enough, Father? And that's why I wouldn't let anyone touch him until he went to his father to make sure that it was enough. I think that if you lose, if you use that in the same correlation as the saved and not saved, they will be sealed, but they will not know in and of themselves that they have truly done everything that the Lord has required of them. Although, according to God, they are sealed. Yeah. It'll just give them that strength to face whatever they have to face, no matter what. God will provide what we need mm -hmm. to the very end. Praise God. That's the faith that we must hold on to. Correct. All right. Anybody else have any further questions or comments before we have prayer? This is a tough lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Louise would say, what? What, what, what is this part that I say? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like we need a little more study. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we all need to 
Tell me some more about this. This subject to be brought out in this many words here, you yeah. know, is yeah. not enough. No, he, he, he didn't. He didn't actually have enough. I know. I really didn't quite understand all. it all. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to look at the Bible commentary. It brought me, it gave me a little bit more understanding. But anyway, thank you everybody for your comments and your uh, participation. Uh, we'll now get ready for prayer.